Howdy, I hope you're well. We've had a question in the last video about the barking audio, which I'll address in the next video. We've also had a question about the relevance of measuring audio and why it matters. I do assume you all know the information about the audio I'm collecting and how I extract the information, but I haven't given any detailed explanation, so here we go. When I first started all this, I began collecting audio which sounded like running and bipedal footsteps, and I was sure it wasn't an animal, but there wasn't any way to prove it. My subscribers were pointing out that it could be anything, so I had to figure out a way to differentiate between wallabies, kangaroos and humans. So in May 2012, I walked, jogged and ran past an audio recorder to have some sort of audio comparison. Not knowing exactly what I needed at the time, and again thanks to others pointing out errors, after six years of trial and error, I found three reference points to help me differentiate the difference between humans and animals. Volume of recorded footsteps, impact of recorded footsteps, and the distance between recorded footsteps. The volume of recorded footsteps will tell us how far away the subject is. The impact of recorded footsteps will tell us how heavy the subject is compared to myself. The distance between recorded footsteps will tell us how tall the subject is compared to myself. After a lot of searching, I found a program that could measure every aspect of the audio I was collecting and Isotope RX was the key. The first major part was to collect the audio of myself walking in front of the audio recorders at known distances to get a baseline so we could measure and compare my footsteps volumes, footsteps impacts and footsteps lengths to unknown footsteps. I've done this around seven times in the last six years. This is me walking in front of the new audio recorders at two meters, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, and 40 meters. While making the footsteps video, we had the new audio recorders recording the whole thing. If we have a look at the audio itself, we can see at the start that the very bottom of my footstep impacts are very close to the bottom of the page. And at the very end of the recording, the very bottom of the impacts are a lot higher. If we zoom in and use the frequency selection tool to highlight the distance between the bottom of my footstep impact and zero, we can see a measurement in the bottom right hand corner. Doing the same measurement on each footstep in each group of footsteps gives us an average impact measurement for that group. If we do this with the entire set, we can make up a chart to display my impact averages at each known distance to compare with unknown subjects. Local ambience at the time of the recording was measured and can be used later to adjust ambient volumes of newly recorded unknown footsteps, which increases or decreases distance estimations. Although we're using the same microphones on the same settings, there's slight differences in sensitivity of each microphone, so measuring the ambience from each microphone helps equalise the microphones and comes in handy later for more precise distance and direction locations. If we use the time selection tool and highlight a single footstep, we can find a volume measurement for each footstep in each group of footsteps. Taking an average of each measurement in each group gives us a footstep volume chart that we can use to compare the distance of unknown subjects and put them in the correct position in an impact chart. Using the time selection tool again, we can measure the distance between the footsteps from the beginning of one footstep to the beginning of the next footstep. Although it's audio, it's still the same method when we're measuring footsteps that are in the sand, from the heel of one footstep to the heel of the next footstep. Our measurements are in milliseconds and can be displayed in a chart with wallabies, kangaroos and unknown subjects to compare footstep lengths which directly relates to the height of an unknown bipedal subject. The second part of all this was to use the same audio recorders to collect audio of wallabies and kangaroos hopping at known distances. This was probably the most difficult thing to do. I had to hang the same audio recorders around my neck using the same settings in the same conditions and go to where the wallabies were at night. I used my thermal monocular to locate the wallabies. I slowly approached them and waited for them to jump, taking note of my position and the location of the impact of their hops. I used a laser measurer and a cardboard target to measure the distance between myself and the location of the observed hop. 
The actual hop was recorded on audio. An impact measurement at the known distance was measured and added to the impact chart. This was done multiple times with multiple subjects and added to the chart. I collected one of the kangaroos hopping impacts from the timestamp in a trail camera video, which was then used to locate the corresponding timestamp in the audio files. The other kangaroo we measured was in a live situation with the audio recorders hanging around my neck and using the laser measurer to measure the distance of the noted kangaroo hop. As you can see, we probably need some more wallabies and kangaroos in our impact chart, but the difference between the subjects is clear. When I actually find a piece of footstep audio that I think is odd, I then measure the volume of each footstep, the impact of each footstep, and the average step length of the footsteps to compare with the charts. After adjusting the ambient volumes, I first check the footstep volume chart to see where it should go in the footstep impact chart. I then place it in the impact chart to see the comparison. The step length chart is used to compare unknown subjects with known subjects and also gives us an estimation of height of the unknown subject. No one that I can see is trying to distinguish humans from animals through footstep acoustic analysis in the exact way that I'm doing it, but we know that we can roughly estimate someone's height and weight from their footstep and stride length. Homeland Security Affairs is working on an automated recognition of acoustic and vibration threats for security breach detection. The Journal of Acoustical Society of America is working on vibration and sound signatures of human footsteps in buildings. Elifesciences.org has an article about the oldest footprints ever found and how the scientists estimated height and weight just from the footsteps themselves. The Scientific American has an article for kids about estimating someone's height from their step length. I did ask a scientist about acoustic measurements of human footsteps and he confirmed that if someone has a stride length 5% smaller than mine, then the height of that person should be 5% smaller than mine as well but it's a rough calculation and within two inches. Now you could call that email confirmation bias and this method is not scientifically endorsed or acknowledged so this method is experimental with experimental data but that doesn't make it invalid. Having said that, the measurements are facts, the charts are facts and the recorded footsteps are facts. You'll have to decide for yourself what to think about the results. Because we have four microphones facing in four different directions, we can use mathematics and our calibrated measurements to determine a calculated distance and an estimated direction from our camera trap for each footstep of any unknown subject. The reason I do this is so we can see behaviour. If we use Zoom Earth or Google Earth, we can get an aerial photograph of the location of our gear. We can take a measurement and then overlay a group of rings which represents 40 metres. Knowing where north is, we can then input the distance and direction of any subject. By calculating the distance and direction of the start and end footstep in each group of footsteps, we can then plot these positions in a video animation. Here we can see the actual measurements from an animation in video number 52 at 2 minutes and 26 seconds. If we have a closer look, we can see north, south, east and west. These are our microphones. The numbers beside them are actual volume measurements from each microphone of the first major step. The next group of numbers are the adjustments to equalise the microphones. The next group of numbers are the true volume measurements in decibels. The smaller the number, the louder the recording is. We can see just by the numbers that the south and east facing microphones recorded the footstep the loudest. That means our subject must be to the southeast. If we average the two measurements, we get an average volume of 25.7 decibels. The volume chart says that our subject should be at a distance of around 40 metres. This means that our subject should be 40 metres away and to the southeast. That is the location of one footstep at that time and that location. If we calculate all the other footsteps and locations, we can then animate the subject's movements. Using this method, we can also identify different subjects in different locations. Recently I identified three separate subjects in three separate locations on the same night at the same time. 
One of the subjects was recorded twice before during the same week and was identified by its step lengths. All three individual subjects were tracked using their step lengths, footstep volume and direction calculations. Footstep lengths, footstep volumes, footstep impacts, locations and movements from unsuspecting subjects can't be hidden from our audio recorders. And this information can be used to create an animation of the subject's movements which show us behaviour. The three unknown subjects act in a completely different manner to the wallaby which hops straight through the middle of our setup. I can't tell you that our unknown subjects are Yowies because to mainstream science and to the general public, Yowies don't exist. It is also a statistical impossibility that everything we collect is Yowie related and without other evidence like unknown vocalisations or video, there's no way to confirm what we're collecting but the charts don't lie and most of the unknown subjects stick out like a sore thumb. In the same location, another subject ran straight across the field of view of our camera, but the camera wasn't sensitive enough or quick enough to capture it. These old trail cameras just aren't quick enough or sensitive enough to capture anything moving quickly or anything at any great distance, but these ones just might be. I've removed the time-lapse cameras from the trap and replaced them with the new cameras and our new setup is in the forest right now. We'll also have to use this setup in a wide open area like this one to give us the best chance. I hope this video explains everything I'm up to and clears things up for those who needed more information. Stay safe and thanks for watching.